Good morning. Glad to see you here today. Hope you'll take a few moments and register your attendance, especially if you're visiting with us. There are a few announcements in your bulletin. Um, is there someone from United Methodist Women who's going to make an announcement? Yes. Sue? Well, she stood up, so. You have just been recruited into UMW Service Project <laughs> by identifying hymnals that need rehabilitation. Right? Good. So that's pretty good. They're going to help out and do that, celebrate with birthday cake. It's 150 years of service for United Methodist Women. And if you can be there at 930, they'll be glad to have you. Ash Wednesday service this year is at Bethel Presbyterian Church, 6 o'clock. I encourage you to be there. The choir will be arriving at 5.30 to go over things and get organized. And then uh, the service actually begins at 6 o'clock. Are there other announcements that need to be shared? Yes, ma'am. Central EMS is having a fundraiser on the 31st of March, and there will be a sign-up sheet to provide desserts for that fundraiser. The church has done that in the past, and if, if you could indicate uh, how many desserts you're bringing, that would be great. It's a, a great service for the community, and many of our folks are involved with Central EMS. I, I wanted to make sure you get a copy of the newsletter. We emailed this out, but it's also available uh, in the back. And if you'll notice, uh, first on the backs of it, the last page, it has two important things. The first is Spring Bling and Style Show raised $3,068.50, which is pretty amazing. <laughs> What's also amazing is that it was a full room, full of people, and uh, had a great fellowship time. And it was both a fellowship time and a successful fundraiser. And we appreciate all those involved with Spring Bling and Style Show. Vacation Bible School is going to have a planning meeting March 21st at 6 p.m. in the men's Sunday school class. If you like children and children like you, you need to be at that meeting. <laughs> you need to be there to help plan and get in on the ground floor of Vacation Bible School. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so you can help in ways that you don't even have to see children, that's what I'm hearing. That, that may get you some more people, it's a good, good idea. We love children, we really do. On the front is a uh, report of our Consecration Sunday a couple of weeks ago. We had our, our Consecration Sunday, Morris Mathis gave a great sermon about the future of the church and faith communities. I want to uh, commend this report to you to read. It was a very successful day. Uh, we went over the numbers again and again and again because you, you're just so faithful. You're just absolutely amazing in the things that you do. Uh, 
we increased in every category that we're supposed to increase. And we uh, had a, a very good and successful stewardship campaign. It uh, indicates that our expected income for this year is going to be 5% above what it was last year, and we did pretty good last year. Uh, that's a, in dollars is about $16,480. Also, the facilities uh, fund has seen an increase of 16% uh, in the total amount that is pledged to that. And so we, we appreciate your faithfulness and your participation in Consecration Sunday. And we just can't say enough about how you support the many ministries of the church through giving and participation. And we appreciate you doing that. Now if we'll stand for the call to worship. Will you join me in the call to worship, please? <clears throat> Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him who earnestly repent of their sins and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors as we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us from joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves his love for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Please be seated if the children would come forward and join Ashley for children's time. perfect, but these changed the way that I can see. In our Bible story today, we hear about the transfiguration of Jesus. Who knows what transfiguration means? The change. It's a fancy word of saying change. 
Jesus changed the way the disciples could see him. So one time, Jesus went up a really tall mountain with some of his disciples to pray. It was late at night, so everyone was very sleepy. Can you show me your sleepy faces? Show me your sleepy faces. Good job. That's how the disciples looked. But then something happened that made them wide awake. Show me your wide awake faces. That's a good one. Okay. So when this something surprising happened, they saw a change come over Jesus. His clothes became dazzling white, and they saw him for what he really was. They also saw two men from the Bible, Moses and Elijah, who had gone to heaven a long time before. And they showed up and started talking to Jesus about what the special work Jesus was going to do when he got to Jerusalem. Just then, a cloud came down and covered everyone, and the disciples became afraid. Can you show me your afraid faces? (laughs) You're never afraid? Wow, that's impressive. (laughs) Well, that's exactly how the disciples felt. They felt a little bit scared. Something amazing was happening, but they were confused until they heard a voice from the cloud that said, This is my son. Listen to him. Who do you think the voice was? That's right. The voice was God. He was making sure that they understood that Jesus was his son. Then the cloud disappeared, and only Jesus was there. After that, they always looked at Jesus a little bit different, because they saw how things really were. So this story, just like my glasses, helped me see how things really are. Jesus helped them see how he really was. So let us pray together. Dear God, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for his love love. and that he came to save us. Help us to listen to Jesus Jesus. and to see what is real. real. In Jesus' name we pray. pray. Amen. Amen. As the ushers come forward, we prepare to respond to God's faithfulness with our faithfulness. Let us pray. Merciful God, you have blessed us, you have told us, you have redeemed us, and you have given us work to do. We ask that as we give you these gifts, tithes, and offerings, that you'll use them to do the work of your church in this community and far beyond, so that others may know of your great love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
will you join me in the affirmation of faith? I believe in God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life. And let the church say amen. amen. We come to the prayer concerns and celebrations. And this morning, uh, Allie has the yellow cards. And if you have a concern or celebration that you'd like, uh, 
our Monday morning Methodists send cards to folks and let them know that we're praying for them. So she'll bring you a card if you don't have one so you can fill that out and we can get that uh, connection made. Are there uh, concerns or celebrations that we want to lift up? Yes, ma'am. Chris Harvey, for Chris Harvey, who's a wedding heart transplant, we say together, Lord, hear our prayer. Virginia Menifee is 39 years old today. We celebrate your life and all your service, and we say together, praise be to God. Yes, ma'am. That's more information than I can repeat. <laughs> Kaylee is signed. Kagan is signed to play soccer on the college level, and we are celebrating with her, and we say together, thanks be to God. Well, it is in Louisiana, but it's still okay. It is a Methodist college, so I guess it's okay. And we celebrate that saying, praise be to God. Very good. We continue to pray for Ann Carpenter as she uh, recovers and adjusts to life in Denton. And we lift her up saying, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Are there others? Okay. At World Day of Prayer, we were given the name of Rodney Martin. Uh, he's been diagnosed with cancer. And we lift him up as he begins uh, treatment, and we say together, Lord, hear our prayer. We also want to give thanks to God for the community coming together at World Day of Prayer. Uh, as she said during the announcements, there were 10 churches, about 40 plus people, and uh, uh, lots of uh, cooperation there. Uh, people from various churches took part in the service. And we, we rejoice to be part of such a community and we say thanks be to God. Amy Slow. Amy Slow's been diagnosed with cancer and we pray for her saying together, Lord, hear our prayer. Yes, sir. For Marcia Brown, as she's uh, getting treatment at MD Anderson, we say together, Lord, have mercy. For Benny, who's in Benny Wool, who's in Clear Lake Hospital with respiratory uh, trouble, we say together, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Yes, sir. For George and Jan, who are suffering. How long? Next Sunday. 63 years. 63 years is very impressive. 
And we celebrate that with you and her saying together, thanks be to God. I've got to tell you that it is scary to play a trumpet solo. I never got to. I had to switch to baritone to do that. But uh, Stephen has done great. He's, he was in worship playing for us as well. And we celebrate his talent saying, thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Yes, ma'am. Barbara Geese. Pray for Barbara, saying together, Lord, hear our prayer. I um, want to continue to pray for the life of the church, the whole church. I want to continue to pray specifically for the United Methodist Church. Uh, we did have our general conference this past week. There was arguments and debating and demonstrations and all of the things that go along with the democratic process. Decisions were made and basically uh, the church voted to maintain its current stance moving forward. And I wish I could tell you that that might settle things for a while, but there's another general conference next year. There are people who are on all sides of this issue that are happy and there are people on all sides of this issue that are very upset. And I think our role is to pray for the unity of Christ's body, the church. Uh, that we overcome these divisions, that we love one another in spite of whatever we hold against one another, and that we seek to live in love and peace together. All people are welcome in the church. All people are welcome to participate in the life of the church. And we encourage uh, you to make that known to everyone that you meet. Whether they're like me or different than me. Whether they're like you or different than you. We try to be the church of Jesus Christ. And so I ask you to pray for the church and to pray that the church will move forward faithfully. And we say together, Lord, hear our prayer. Let us go to God in prayer together and for one another. Merciful God, you have given us life. You have given us opportunity. You have called us into your service and you have equipped us to be your church. We give you thanks for all of these gifts and callings. We ask that you help us to faithfully execute the mission of the church, to bear witness and to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. We pray, O oh God, that you would help us to do that right here where we live, that we might reach out to those people in our neighborhood, that we might reach out to those people that we know and those whose names we cannot call. Help us to be the church right here where we live so that you may be made known through the actions and the ministries of faithful disciples here in West Columbia. We pray that you'd help us to faithfully be the church to the larger world. Help us as we support missionaries and projects around the world. Allow us to be the kind of church that reaches out in concern and service so that when people see the church at work. They ask, who are they serving? What kind of a God sends people into the world like this with passion and commitment? Allow us to be those who go and represent you faithfully wherever we are so that others may be drawn into your presence. We pray, O oh God, that you'd be with those of our number who cannot be with us today. We ask that you would be with them in healing ways, in comforting ways, in ways that we cannot be part of their lives. 
we recognize that you are able to do for them so much more than we can. And we call upon your presence to do those things which only you can do. We also recognize that there are places and times that you can use us. And we pray that you will equip us and make us available so that we can be part of their lives in helpful ways that share your love. We pray all these things in Christ Jesus' name, using the words that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. may be seated. Will you join me in the prayer for illumination? Living God, help us to hear the scriptures so that we may truly understand. That understanding we may believe. In believing we may fall in all faithfulness and obedience. Seeking your honor and glory in all that we do. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The sermon text is Luke 9, 28 through 43. Now about eight days after these sayings, Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which was about to accomplish in Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighted down with sleep, but since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory in the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he had said. While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. 
Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. And they kept silent, and those who in those days told no one of anything they had seen. On the next day, they had come down from the mountain. A great crowd met them. When a man from the crowd shouted, Teacher, I beg you to look at my son. He is my only child. Suddenly a spirit seized him, and all at once he shrieked. It convulses him upon, until he foams at the mouth, and it mauls him and will scarcely leave him. I beg you, the, the disciples, to cast him out, but they could not. Jesus answered, You faithless and perverse generation, how much longer must I be with you and bear with you? Bring your son here. While he was coming, the demon dashed him to the ground in convulsions. But Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit, healed the boy, and gave him back to his father. And all were astonished at the greatness of God. The word of God for the people of God. God. Don't you just love roller coasters? I mean, roller coasters are amazing, aren't they? Emotional roller coasters, not so much fun. But it's amazing that those feelings that we have of tightening up in the stomach and the dizziness and all that kind of stuff, from an emotional roller coaster, we try to recreate with a physical experience. We don't like it when it happens to us emotionally, but we seem to seek it out from time to time. Adrenaline, fear, expectation, anxiety, all at the same time with a physical experience on a roller coaster. The ups and the downs. And it begins before you get on the roller coaster, by the way. If you go to Bush Gardens in Virginia, they have something called the Loch Ness Monster, and it has interlocking loops. It's a really fun ride. My dad and I were there, and we're going in line, and as you're going in line, a voice comes on and says, The ride you're about to go on has certain stresses. If you're on blood pressure medication, or prone to blackouts, or expecting the child, you may not want to ride this ride. Every five minutes, to the point that my dad's beginning to check his blood pressure <laughs> and thinking about all those things. And people got out of line because they were told what to expect and the fear overcame them before they even got on the ride. And so they didn't get the thrills they just got the fear. And in other places, they don't have those announcements. And so you just kind of blindly wander up and get on, and people will come off just staggering because it's crazy what they just did to you without warning. You got on there, and you went up, and you came down, and you went round and round, and you get off, and you're just a noodle. And so, which is better to be warned or not to be warned? I remember riding the Texas Cyclone before Astro World went away. That was the craziest, most dangerous wooden roller coaster in existence. Just crazy. My mother and uh, her best friend across the street, Mrs. Fontenot, took us on the band trip. They were chaperones. And so we went to Dallas and we did our band stuff and we went to Six Flags. And there they had the giant. And the Giant is an amazing, huge roller coaster, or was. It's probably out of commission now. But what I remember the most about the Giant was not riding it, but that it stopped and got stuck for an hour. My mother and Mrs. Fontenot were on it. Now, sometimes in life, we have those mountaintop experiences, you know? And we want them to last forever like the disciples on the mountaintop with Jesus where he's revealing his total glory and he's there with Moses and Elijah and they're, they're just in the presence of God and they can, they can just feel it. And you just want that mountaintop experience to last forever. When you're stuck on a roller coaster, you want it to be over now. You want it to be over now. Because you want to go on and get past the anxiety 
into the good part, the adrenaline. But the disciples, they wanted to stay there, didn't they? The disciples had gone up the mountain with Jesus. They had all sorts of expectations, probably all of which were wrong. They probably thought to themselves, well, Jesus picked me, so he must see something in me. He must be going to give me special instruction. I must be special because Jesus chose me above the other nine. That's a wrong expectation. Jesus chose those three to accompany him for his own purposes so that they could be his witnesses. But it didn't make them special just to be chosen. It made them special to be with Jesus. He took them up and they were there and as much as they wanted to participate, their human frailty still interfered with what they wanted to do. They wanted to be there and participate. And I, I got to tell you, if there's Moses and Jesus and Elijah, I've got questions I want them to ask, to answer. I want to ask. I want to be part of that conversation. And those three men must have been the same, at least a little bit. I mean, these are heroes. These are giants of the faith. Wouldn't you want to participate in that conversation? And yet, the human frailty of their condition was they were tired from the journey up the mountain and they were barely able to stay awake when the glory of the Lord shone round them whenever Jesus revealed who Jesus really is, transfigured to pure light in front of them. The best they could do is say, we need to build dwelling places. We need to put tabernacles. We need to have places for you to stay so that when we wake up tomorrow, you'll still be here. Isn't that what human beings do when we have religious experiences? We mark the place where that happened. So we can go back to that place that we had a religious experience in order to have it again. There's a trail called the Prayer Trail at Lakeview Methodist Assembly. And on the Prayer Trail are hundreds and hundreds of crosses made by campers and placed there on the Prayer Trail so that they can return to those crosses and remember summer camp. My friend Louis Blevins, every time he is within driving distance of Lakeview, will tell the story of where his cross is, and if he really has time, he'll stop and go down that trail to the place where they left it. It's not there anymore. There have been storms. There have been, there have been other things. There have been 40 years worth of campers with their own experiences. But he goes back to the place that he makes the connection with God. That's the way human beings tend to be. We want to build a building. We want to build a tabernacle. We want to have a place where we can go back and say, I felt God here. That's the response of the disciples having that experience with Jesus. But that's not what Jesus has prepared them for. As they are trying to capture what God is doing, as they're trying to make it a spot to come back to, cloud appears. Just like our weather. A cloud comes up instantly. A voice speaks, this is my son, the beloved, the chosen. Listen to him. And when they open their eyes, it's just Jesus standing there. And when Jesus speaks, he says, time to go back down the mountain. Think about that for a few minutes. When we have these amazing religious experiences in our lives, we want to make a place to have that again and again and again and again, sort of like a roller coaster. We want to go and get that experience again and again and again and again. But I have friends who rode those roller coasters again and again and again and again, and by the end of the day, it was no big deal. By the end of the day, they were writing with their hands up going, yeah. Because it became normal to them. 
But Jesus doesn't let them build something. He doesn't let them stay on the mountain. He says it's time to go. And they follow him down. Down into the valley. Where there are people who are still dealing with life. Where there are people who are still uh, grappling with the challenges that life brings to them. And they're seeking out help and they're getting help and yet there are things that can only be accomplished by Jesus. This man has a son who's possessed by a demon and he throws him on the ground and he convulses him. He makes him do all sorts of things to injure himself and others. And the man brings him to Jesus' disciples and they are powerless I don't know why they're powerless. Jesus gives us authority to do things. He gives us authority to cast out demons. He gives us authority to heal. In the Gospel of Luke, he sends out his disciples two by two, and they do all of those things. But in this particular case, they're not able to to match this particular power. And I don't know why, but when Jesus gets there, he's able to take care of it. He's able to out the demon, he's able to remove the impediment and he restores the boy to life fully and he gives the boy back to his family, to his father. There's a lesson in that for us. We are those who point to Jesus. We are the people who say, I know that there is someone that God sends into the world who is able to meet and exceed every challenge. And it's not me. And it's not anybody that I know that lives in the neighborhood, except that it's Jesus. You see, there are some places in the world that only Jesus can reach. We are his witnesses. We point to who He is. We remind people of the experiences that we have had. But it's going to take the presence of Jesus Himself, the Holy Spirit, in their lives to truly restore them to life. That lesson is one that we have to learn over and over again as disciples. That God has a role for us to play, but God ultimately plays the role of God. We just point to God. We give direction to God. We introduce people to Jesus. We share Jesus in every way we can. But ultimately, Jesus is the one who is their salvation. Not us, not the church, not the institution. But just the Savior of the world. The Son of God. We are faithful disciples when we point to Him. When we go with Him up the mountain and have those experiences, and when we follow Him back down into the valley, when we stand and watch Him heal and bear witness to what has happened, we are the disciples. We make up the church. We bring people into that relationship. I wish I didn't know some of the people I grew up with. Nobody else feels that way? Okay. (laughs) But there were certain folks that I grew up with who had a tendency to suggest that we do things that were a little bit more adventuresome, if you know what I mean. They were the kind of people who would get on the roller coaster and only make the bar have one click instead of coming all the way down. They were the kind of people who would get in the very back, back car. The one that kind of comes a little bit off of the rails when you go over the hill. They were the kind of people who would sometimes take things on the roller coaster you're not supposed to have on the roller coaster just to make it more fun. Those experiences were scary. Those experiences shaped who you were. 
but they weren't like the experience that you have with Jesus. Because the experience you have with Jesus is one where he comes into your life at a time when you're scared and he brings about peace. Times when you're confused and he brings about clarity. Times when you are alone and he reminds you that you are not alone. May we be those who can point to a Savior who fills the needs of our lives and is able to fill the needs of others' lives. May we be those who have had those experiences on the mountaintop where we see what we believe is Christ's true nature and we share that with as many people as we can, knowing that they also will have their own experience. May we be the church that points to Jesus, that gives Christ the glory for all that Christ is capable of doing so that people can come into his presence and have that same relationship that gives life to them, that they might be restored to themselves and into the family of God. I don't know why Jesus chose the three that he chose. I don't know why the folks at the bottom of the hill couldn't do what they were asked to do. But I do know that Jesus is able to answer all those questions. And someday he will. And someday we'll be with him. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We come now to the service of Holy Communion. Your responses are printed in your bulletin. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, brought us to a land flowing with milk and honey, and set before us the way of life. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of a new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. We, many as we are, are one body in Christ Jesus. And when we break this bread, it's a means of sharing the body of Christ. 
when we share the cup. It's a means of sharing the blood of Christ. In just a moment, you'll come at the direction of the ushers. The choir will come first and be served and return to their seats. As we come to this table, we come as disciples. We don't come as Methodists. We come as those who call upon the name of the living Lord. And we invite everyone who calls upon the name of Jesus to come and receive these elements.
Let us pray. Merciful God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that by the strength of your Spirit, we may go into the world to give ourselves to others in your name. Amen. The closing hymn this morning is number 396. If you're using the hymnal, you won't find it at 369. It'll be 396. Oh, Jesus, I have promised. If we would uh, like to make this your church home, we invite you to do that. If you would like to make a public profession of your faith, we invite you to do that as well. To make those things happen, just meet me here at the front as we sing the verses of, Oh, Jesus, I have promised. If we'll stand and sing together. Okay, turn to somebody and say, I'm glad you were here today. Okay, 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 okay. But I'm glad you were here today, too. And we're going out into the world that is glad we are the church. Go and be the church. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.